And welcome back to My Conscious Dad on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. If you're just joining us today, we are talking about what it means to be a role model. So we were just going over the top five qualities of role models, and we had just finished with number two, so I'm going to go ahead and skip to number three. And number three says commitment to community. And I really like this one because uh, it's just a quality that I really admire, and most more role models I have they identify with this one. And I think uh, role models usually focus on others and they're very involved in the community and they give away their time and their talents in order to serve others. Yeah, I think, you know, when you go on this conscious journey and realize that uh, it's that life isn't always about you. It's not always about me and, you know, it's it's not about being selfish and, well, what's in it for me? And once you, once you evolve past that point and you become selfless and you start realizing that you have a gift and you have embraced that gift and now it's time for you to share that gift with the world, you decide to now be a contribution in whichever way you can, even if it's not that gift. Maybe it, you figure out that, hey, I could just pitch in or you decide that you're responsible for your community. Instead of saying, you know, why can't it be like this and why can't it be like that, rather than looking through the perspective of the victim, you can choose to look at it from the responsible version of, well, if it's going to be different or if I want to look different, what am I doing about it? And so let me be a contribution to my community so that I can be a part of the growth and part of change. And then that's when you decide that now, you know, you get to pitch in some way. And if we all thought like that, if we all came from, let me contribute some way to my community, man, the, and the, the world would be a, a totally different place. You know, our, our, our homeless wouldn't be homeless. They'd all have places to stay and, uh, you know, they'd have warm food to eat. And, you know, it, I mean, the world would just be so much better if we all came from that that come from of being a contribution in the world. What I really like about this, too, is that I kind of realized maybe um, in junior high or high school, a lot of my friends' parents weren't very involved in the community where I thought that was really bizarre because my parents were and my family was. Um, you know, if someone goes missing in town, you and mom were always the first ones to say, oh, they're, they're rallying up a bunch of people to go look for this missing girl. Do you want to come? Me and my sister would always say, yes, let's go. And we'd go do that as a family. So growing up to see my friends' parents and, you know, a lot of other adults not not like that or not contributing to the community or being a part of the community, I realize that's what separated us from them and what made us an extraordinary family versus just an ordinary family, which I also realized, too, that there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being ordinary, but if I had the option, I would definitely rather be extraordinary. But, but you're only saying that from, do I have the option because you were exposed to another option? Right. Some people aren't exposed to that. It's just, you know, you're not, you're not in control of the family that you're born into. Some people are born into, you know, major dysfunctional families where they're being abused and, and uh, you know, my heart breaks for people like that because they, they never get to see something different and they, they grow up just being, you know, getting used to being put down, whether it's verbally or mentally or emotionally abused. So, you know, it's, it's not their fault that they never have been taught that. Um, it could be refreshing, though, for you to reach out to some of your, your friends. And I know you've done that several times with some of the projects, community projects that we've done, you, you know, you've always brought, you know, a straggler, one of your straggler friends with you, and it was good to see them. It's like, hey, it's good to see you. And and I know that I'm sure a lot of, they probably may not have shared that with you, and I know a lot of them probably appreciate that. Like, hey, that was fun. I never, my family never does that, and it felt good to 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 give back. And uh, so you can just be an invitation. Just keep inviting people to, you know, to come play. Hey, we're getting together, and we're going to, you know, go do this for the community, or we're going to help this group. Would you like to come and join join us. You'll be amazed how many people, when they're asked, they think to themselves like, yeah, you know what? I, it's been a long time since I've done that, since I've had that feeling of, of giving, giving it away or helping someone else. And it gives people to realize for themselves that they are compassionate and they are caring human beings. Uh, I, think it, as, I think we don't give ourselves permission enough because we're unconscious. But as, as you start to become more conscious, you can invite other people to come play that game with you. And if, if you're just starting this, you know, journey of consciousness and you want to invite people to also win with you, there's going to be a lot of people who say no or who aren't willing to do these things. And I, 
it was really hard for me, especially at a young age, to realize that I didn't need to take that personal, that it had nothing to do with me. It was about that specific person and separating myself from that situation situation and not making it about me and i remember when you did though make it about you and it was that was heartbreaking for me because you know i'd say hey i thought so-and-so was coming and you you would go i want to talk about it and you, know, you just wanted to look like you wanted to cry and i was like what's the matter and you, you just you like i said you you really care about people and you want people to win and and when they don't and when they don't step up for their own selves, I think you you get hurt. You know, you're you're let down by that, and you don't realize that. You know, you you just got to constantly be an invitation, not take it personal. And people are ready; they'll come. It might take the tenth invitation or the two hundredth, but when they finally do, it's what what you know what a rejoicing moment for you to go. That's awesome, and that's when you turn around and you go, hey, you know, what? I'm really proud of you, or hey, I'm really glad that you joined us. That's that's really what we get to be as you know keepers of the light is just invite people as well as inviting ourselves to step up to our next level as well. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to number four of the top five qualities of role models. Number four says selflessness and acceptance of others, and I think people maybe because I admire these people, but I think people really admire people who who choose to live their lifestyle as a type of service to other people. Yeah, you know, like I said earlier, it's like when you realize that um, it's not always about you, right? Um, there's a whole nother level that you'll get to if you continue to go down that journey is that we're all one. So if if it is if you are making it about you then you're me i'm you and we're all one so when you're helping someone else you really are helping yourself because we're all one entity we're all one energy we're all one love we're all one god we're all the same and and that's that's i think the problem with society is that we haven't learned yet or remembered that we're all one we still separate ourselves i'm mad at you well, if you're mad at you're mad at the other person, you're really being mad at yourself because in essence we're all one we're one being, we're one energy. And so I think people it hasn't clicked for people yet and people are still slowly starting to wake up and realizing that. And when you hurt someone else, you're really hurting yourself. And when you get to that level of consciousness, you start realizing that all things are golden, all people are beautiful, all, you know, and so you start having more compassionate for people and, and you're separating yourself, you're, you're separating um, what people are doing to you and you're realizing that you're cut from the same cloth. Yeah, there's, um, there's actually a quote on the website that I got these tips from and one of the younger girls who was part of the survey actually shared about her father so I kind of want to read about it because I really liked it um, she said he never saw social barriers he saw people's needs and acted on them so no matter what their background or circumstances he was never afraid to get his hands dirty his lifestyle was a type of service and I really really like that because she said he saw people's needs and acted on them and I think naturally when we see people in need you kind of think maybe they need money or like sometimes you'll see well I guess I'm making up a, a story but if you see someone on the street um you know and they need money naturally you just you'll give them money but not that many people will go out of their way to see how else they can help them you know offer um you know, if they have some kind of connection to, to a shelter or maybe seeing what the next step is for them, they just give the money and that's it. And I mean, that's great. But I also think that there's more that we can act on. What I love about that quote is it painted the picture of her dad, who obviously to me sounds like a role model, a, a great role model. But it painted the picture of a man who didn't make judgments about people that needed help. It wasn't like he looked at people and said, well, you got, you know, a nice car. You got a couple of jobs. You should be able to afford yourself. He didn't justify it with what he, the assumptions he made. He just looked and saw that somebody needed help and he just jumped in and helped them. It didn't matter if, you know, what, what they had or didn't have or who the connections they made or who's supposed to be helping them. That he just saw people in need and he just gave it and he gave it unconditionally probably. It wasn't with a condition. He just said, I'm just going to, this is my contribution and it's my service to you. Right. I think also too, um, with this, this quote and this dad, it kind of reminded me a little bit of you. And I think that's why I really liked it was just that, like you said, you 
all those things that you're saying I see in you and sometimes people who don't really I hate to say this but sometimes I feel don't really deserve your help people who have either hurt you in the past or our family in the past um and I feel don't deserve your help you always go and help them and I really admire that and I think that's great oh thank you I appreciate that um it it it's my next level of realizing that it doesn't matter what they do to me and I know when you see when somebody does something to me and it and you see it as a negative I have trained myself now to see things as uh just it is what it is meaning i'm neutral about it so things that you might get offended that people do to me i might not get offended by it so i'm growing to a whole nother level where somebody might say something to me or do something or not you know borrow something and not give it back or whatever it is i don't see that as a negative thing i don't see that as a diss i don't see that as disrespectful i don't see that i'm learning how to choose to see that as wow, that's, that's a dysfunction that they got going on. I don't make it about me because I have a choice to, ha to decide how I want to interpret it. So what I've decided to do is start practicing how to choose that. That's, that's something that they got. And so if I'm going to give, I'm going to give because they need help, not because they still owe me 200 bucks or they, because they talked about me or backstabbed me or whatever. Um, and so hopefully that, you know, I can show you guys my my kids uh, that you know giving is giving unconditional it's not giving with conditions and and i hope that you see that that when you when you give something you just you give it like i don't i don't care if it comes back i'm giving it because it's a part of me and my legacy and what and the kind of contribution i want to live behind right i do i i guess the last couple of years especially in workshops and trainings uh when you're basically teaching us that we should be giving unconditionally or introducing the idea that you can give unconditionally. I don't think anybody really naturally teaches you that. And I think I'm very, very, very lucky that that's something that you've stressed to us because I probably would never ever have come to that conclusion or known that if you hadn't told me or really just, you know, I don't want to say shoved it down my throat, but you did. You You taught us that. Just because somebody does something to you doesn't mean you have to stop caring about them or helping them or loving them or or you just have to now you're you're gonna stop giving unconditionally now there's a condition okay I'll do this for you if you promise not to go behind my back or whatever you know so I think that's really great I'm gonna go ahead and move on to number five of the top five qualities of role models which is the ability to overcome obstacles and in the survey. Um, most of the younger people said that success is not so much measured by the position reached, but the obstacles that they had to overcome. Yeah, you know, there's, I believe there's a, a champion and a warrior inside of every one of us. And you'll see those warriors being accessed and the champions that are, that are dug down deep and pulled out of us when we're in some kind of a crisis. When we hit up, when we come up against some kind of a wall or a blockage. Those are the moments, those are the redefining moments that we get to decide to overcome. Um, but we also have an option to not overcome and crawl in a hole and hide out or get depressed or or give up and uh you know i think what's what's empowering is to, to have parents that have learned how to decide that giving up is not an option that i'm going to figure out how to overcome even if even if i'm not going to figure out myself well, the cool thing about leadership is when you're a, when you're a powerful leader you have developed some good relationships with others that that admire you and they love you and they look you know, look up to you or 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 you look up to them but you got a great powerful network of people that are like-minded and cut from the same cloth so you you don't always have to figure out your own solutions you can always turn to somebody and go hey i'm up against it you know what are your thoughts and then you can get some great insight from people that aren't they're not attached to the breakdown that you're having they're on the outside looking in so they're probably the ones that are gonna give you the best advice and so or or they might say hey you know what that's a no-brainer you know because i love you and because i care for you and because of the stuff you've done for me i'm gonna make a couple phone calls and boom it's handled that's why relationships are so important and i know people you know some people are like oh you know if you don't like me you know tough and all that kind of stuff i'm not saying that you gotta live your life to get approval from others but having golden relationships with people is important because you know you can't do you can't 
navigate through life all by yourself. You know, sometimes you need some support. Sometimes there are going to be times you need some help. And sometimes you're going to need to lean on somebody. And there's nothing greater than giving other people that gift to be able to support you when you need it. I know a lot of givers, a lot of people that live their life in contribution, they have a hard time receiving. They have a, have a hard time asking for help when they're down and out. And that's not, that's not effective leadership either. Imagine, imagine what it would look like if I was this stubborn you know, guy that just wanted, needed to do everything by myself. And we were suffering. And it's like, no, I got this. I got this. And my whole family is going, but dad, why don't you, you know, so-and-so is willing to help us. No, no, no. I want to figure this out by myself. What would you think if I was just stubborn? really stubborn and wanted to do it I was was more concerned about me doing it and being right about how it should look rather than achieving the result well I'd probably have a couple of negative opinions about you but not only that is I would probably be the same way I, I know that's because you're you're what you're following suit that would be me that would be my role model which is you know not letting people support us and being a being a good giver is also being a good receiver it's the yin and the yang you have to be you have to be able to be, receive from people as well as give and they go hand in hand yeah, I was gonna say having that confidence to not be stubborn and go out and get what you want from other people with other people's help is um I don't know really how to how else to compare it, but the person I'm thinking of is Jerry Goldman, Jerry Sarati Goldman, co-owner of KHTS, and she's very much like that. And and you were giving some examples that just reminded me. Sometimes I'll be stuck in something and I can't figure out how to win. I can't figure out how to get out of this. And I'll go to her and she'll be like, "Easy, this is what I'm gonna do." <laughs> and I'm like, "Are you serious? I've been stressing about this for two weeks, and I could have just come down here." Well, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry's, she's a cloth of her own. They're, they're, they broke the mold when, when they, you know, created her. She's just, she's an absolute angel. And, you know, she will take the shirt off her back to give it to you. And, and um, those people are just, you know, they're rare. And, uh, you know, if you have a relationship like that, you really want to savor that relationship and, and honor it and, and really not take it lightly. But um, when it comes down to you being a giver, um, I remember forget one time my mentor when I was younger told me, he said, uh, he looked at me, he goes, you know, he goes, you give a lot to people. He goes, but you, there's a taker inside of you. He goes, you, you know how to take. And I said, well, what do you mean? And I thought that was, a, he was like dissing me. And I was like, what do you mean I'm a taker? And he goes, yeah. He goes, when I offered to help you, you said, it's okay, you got it. And I know you don't got it. And I just, I remember putting my head down. He goes, and now what you're doing is you're taking away the opportunity for me to give back to you. And he goes, and then to me, that's a taker. And that stuck, and meant, one, it stung, and two, it really stuck with me. And I realized in order to be a giver, you have to give other people the opportunity to give back to you. I never, I had never seen it like that. And it wasn't until he had, you know, the gall to, and the audacity to, to really confront me on that. I, n- I never would have had that breakthrough had he had not given us a permission to really open that possibility for me to see it like that yeah you know um sometimes me and my friends we will go out to lunch and and we'll pay for each other and then the next time the other person will pay and i think just having that relationship where i let them pay for me instead of me always paying it makes them feel better they you know so i think it's maybe a little bit simple simpler term of what you're trying to say <laughs> all right stay tuned for more of my conscious dad right here on your hometown station am 1220 khts Welcome back to My Conscious Dad on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. If you're just joining us today, we went over the top five qualities of role models. And if you missed any of it or you want to hear it again, you can always find our podcasts online. But we're going to go ahead and go over a quick recap so you can find out what you missed. Your children watch your every move. You are a role model, no matter what, whether you're conscious of it or not. We talked about being the example. Passionate and developing the ability to inspire. You as parents should be the one influencing your kids. You actually can be influenced negatively. Role models provide your inner voice. Having clear sets of values and morals can help you be a better role model. Commitment to your community. You can actually negotiate a win-win rather than choosing win-lose. Inviting others to win with you. Uh, We talked about accepting of others. We talked about giving because people need it and giving unconditionally. We also talked about it's not always about you. 
and we've talked about figuring out how to overcome obstacles. So next week we are going to be talking about the power of vulnerability, one of my favorite topics. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I had somebody uh, in one of the the SEV Women's Empowerment Group, she said, she shared that, she goes, I have always seen vulnerability as um, not, not a good asset. And she's like, I never seen it as powerful before. And I told her, you know what? I never had seen it like that either until I had the experience of allowing myself to be vulnerable and then getting feedback from people that that uh, really help people in, in a certain situation make a powerful decision for themselves. So had I not experienced the power of vulnerability, I never would have thought in a million years that vulnerability is, is powerful. And when I talk about powerful, I mean... It's powerful in a way that it, it causes people to pay attention. It causes people to engage. It causes others to trust. It causes others to, um, to listen to you. Um, vulner you being able to access your vulnerability when it's, when it's purposeful and when it's authentic can, can move mountains. It can enroll millions of people into um, understanding where you're coming from and enroll them into an idea and then aligning behind you. You know, I wish... I could explain vulnerability and what it looks like um, because a lot of people ask me like if it's just about, you know, crying and I don't know how to explain that it's not <laughs> because um, a lot of a lot of my friends, you know, I, I cry a lot. So a lot of my friends will say like, oh God, you're so emotional. I'm like, I'm not emotional. I'm just vulnerable. <laughs> so a lot of people associate it, I think, with crying. But um, yeah, I wish there was some set of definition that I agreed with or that I aligned behind because I don't think, um, you know, the dictionary's definition really is powerful enough for me to use. I can, I can make an attempt. I think it, it is a challenging thing to really describe it. My best, uh, uh, concept of vulnerability is when I'm in a, in a session with somebody, when I'm having a coaching session or somebody just wants to share or needs, needs some comfort or some compassion or they're up against something and we're in a room and as they're sharing with me, there's a certain place that I go. Um, when I say go, not mentally, but emotionally and spiritually, my energy goes to a certain place. It's almost like my walls come down. And I think there's a certain way that I look. There's either an expression on my face. I don't. I can't see myself because there's no mirror. But I have to guess that there's a certain way that I look to the other person and a certain energy that they feel safe enough to open up and share with me in a, in a deep, powerful way. That's the only way that I can understand that that I can comprehend of how to explain vulnerability and people you know they always ask me like how come people open up to you and share with you so freely how do you do that and I have I've had therapists and psychologists that have been in the field for 20 30 years and they're like how do you get people to share with you like that so deeply and I just say it's in my ability to be vulnerable and uh, to, for them as I'm saying that they're they're listening to the words and then they turn it into a Con they turn it into content and vulnerability is in content vulnerability is context it's it's a way of being that you have to practice and uh and it's an art form you know we talk a lot about art form you have to keep practicing being vulnerable in more situations and what happens is people will trust you more and they'll be open to you more and they'll share more um it's it's kind of weird because sometimes i can just be maybe at a, at a bus stop or at somewhere sitting relaxing at a, a you know disneyland or something and we strike up a conversation and before i know it this person's told me their whole life and my wife will walk up you know halfway through the conversation and when we leave and say you know hey it's good talking to you my wife will be like how, like you know sh they, how do you get people just to share like that so deeply with you and it's and i don't know how to explain it. it's just in my way of being especially if if they share with with me something really that i think is really important or, or really personal then my vulnerability, actually, my walls come down even more. Sounds great. I can't wait to talk more about it next week. Thank you so much for joining us today on My Conscious Dad with me, Jasmine Urbina, and my dad, Alex Urbina. We're here every Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. right here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.